I lost my aunt to breast cancer, and that has crossed my mind a bit when I've gone in for my annual appointments. However, I haven't let that stop me from being sure about my health, and I don't think anyone else should either. Black women are often very private. We don't want people knowing our business, but the more we open up, the more it allows us to share information that can be life-saving. And that's why Mary J. Blige is doing this, because she wants to save lives. Hello, Mary J. Blige. This is so important that you're doing this. Hello, Gail. Hey, really <laughs> good to see you. you, you good to see you. You talk in the PSA that you had your first mammogram in your 40s and that you didn't know what to expect. And I know that moment. You walk in that room and you look at that machine and you say, you're going to squeeze what with what? And how flat is it going to be? And how does this work? Because it is very daunting when you look at the apparatus. So do you recall right. that first experience and what it was really like for you? Yeah, my, my first experience, I was a little nervous because yeah. not just the fact that, you know, is it going to hurt, but just getting diagnosed with breath, breast cancer. Like, you know, who wants to walk away with that mm -hmm. um, news? But um, once I did it, I, you know, it, it was all about wanting more information about my body, wanting now I want to know everything about me, you know, because now if I can see it, you know, in the 3D mom the mammographies or the x-rays, x-rays, then, you know, I can change it. And it's all about being able to, it's, a, it's about knowledge, you know, knowledge about your body, knowledge about how a mammogram can save your life is power. That's exactly and, right. Yeah, that's why I'm here. You say your health is your wealth. And you know, Mary, that moment when you're sitting there waiting for the results and the doctor walks in and you're trying to look at their face for what, what is the thing? I always say, could you mm -hmm. smile when you walk in the room? They walk in the room <laughs> to give you the news. Yes, you're yeah. okay. Or no, we need to do some more tests. But you said mm -hmm. if your aunt had had this information, possibly her life could have been saved because according to the CDC, breast cancer death rates are 40% higher among black women yeah. than white women. Exactly. And um, like I, I believe if my aunt had this information, she would be alive. I mean, a lot of us when we're growing up, and in, in our in our households, our mothers don't mention mammograms or you know the importance of it or even breast cancer. A family member just ups and dies, and then later you found out they had breast cancer. Yeah. So just with me going and and having the information that I have, there's a bunch of women that love and respect, you know, just everything that I do and, and I just always want to share with them, you know, not preach to them, just me being an example of, mm -hmm. you know, healthy, healthy, healthy living, just trying to live healthy. And this is a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mary, it's Anthony Mason. I, I, we're talking about some very important health issues here. And I wanted to talk about mental health <laughs> in this coronavirus, because I read that, that, that Mary J. Blige was going back and listening to a lot of Mary J. Blige music, something <laughs> maybe you don't often do. And, right. and, and what you heard in that and, and what you took from it. Man, I, I, mean, I took a lot of learning how to be patient especially from my life, there's this line where it says, um, uh, take your time one day at a time. It's all on you, what you're gonna do. And in the middle of the pandemic, it's like, what else can we do except for take our time one day at a time? We can't go anywhere. We can't really see our family members. So we just have to pray. We just have to be patient and, and pray for patience. And so, yeah, and you know, it was definitely, it was definitely my life and just, my lyrics, you know, ministering back to me and, and, and giving me inspiration. Are you, are, you feeling, are you feeling more creative at this point of time or more sort of, a lot of people feel very shut down. You know, I, I was in the pandemic feeling more creative because there's so much to say. There's, there's, so, much to, there's, so, there's so much to do and there's so much love to give at a, a point like this because you can't, really hate because it could just, it could kill you at a time like this. But it's so much love to give. There's so many things to write about. It's so, and, I, and I, I'm always inspired by real life to, in, in my song. So this was real life. I mean, not that yeah. life wasn't real, but this was like, whoa. And you whoa, know, you can, right. you could, yeah, you could speak negative about it or you could speak optimistically about it. And um, I try to speak optimistically but practical too about it, you know, when I'm writing my lyrics, because you, you can't just be like, it's all good because yeah. it's not. But you but, can say, we, we will get to the other side. That's why it's good to put on a good old Mary J. Blige song. She will get you through many things, Mary J. Blige, I have to say. <laughs> but this just happened right before you came on. Megan Thee Stallion wrote a very powerful op ed in the New York Times today. She says, I was recently the victim of an act of violence by a man at a party. I was shot twice. I walked away from him. I was not in a relationship. 
and then she goes on to say, the way people have publicly questioned and debated whether I played a role in my own violent assault proves that my fears about discussing what happened were unfortunately warranted. And this is a line that gets to me. The issue is even more intense for black women who struggle against stereotypes and are seen as angry and threatening when we try to stand up for ourselves and our sisters. There is not much room for passionate advocacy if you are a black woman. I just thought, bravo, Megan, for writing it. And I'm wow. curious about your reaction upon hearing it. I'm just reading it, too, for the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, this is my first time hearing it. Yeah. I love Meg. I love Megan Thee Stallion. I respect her. She's a beautiful person, a strong woman. And um, she's ahead of the game already because she understands what this game is. You have to be, you have to be private. As public you are as, as you are, people see your life publicly. You have to be private, and you can't give everyone everything. As, as much as people think they know about me, a lot of people know a lot about me because I've been really open and transparent, but they don't know a lot about me. But she's she's so. talking, Mary, about the minimalization of black women that I think is very mm -hmm. important to address. Does that resonate with right. you at all? Well, I mean, it, I mean, it, it does, and, and, and bravo to her for understanding that. For understanding mm -hmm. it and, and speaking it. It's mm -hmm. very it's yeah. in the New York Times today. I highly, highly, yeah. highly recommend people read it. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, thank you and bravo mm -hmm. to you for You're doing welcome. this. You are gonna You're save welcome. many lives. You're gonna get people who will get a mammogram who had never thought about it before. And that's huge. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, yeah. Thank you. Good to see you.